All right. All right, next I'd like to take a look at the expression for the horizontal range. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to derive this expression that you see up on the data projector, b naught squared sine of 2 theta over g. And this works for any problem where the mass lands at the same height from which it is released. This will also give us a little bit of a feeling for how the horizontal range depends on angle and also how we can figure out the maximum horizontal range by giving it the right projection angle. So to get started with this, let's go back to a problem where we have some initial velocity, v naught, and some angle with respect to the horizontal, theta. And this is a special case then, where y equals zero. This wouldn't, you wouldn't want to use this all the time if we didn't have the same uh, vertical uh, position after as we did before. But what we're looking for is this distance x, which we could also call r for the horizontal range. Uh, but in this problem, we can use basically the same ideas that we used before. The x component is going to be v naught cosine theta, and v y initial is going to be v naught sine theta. Okay, and then we can say that our horizontal range is going to be Vx times t. Okay, so that would be V naught cosine of theta times t. But now we need an expression for t. And so let's use an expression that we could get from our first equation here. And our first equation is Vy final equals Vy initial minus gt. I'm going to leave this in terms of Vy initial, Vy final, and the acceleration due to gravity, which in this case I'm going to call negative g, because we're defining this in such a way that the acceleration due to gravity is minus 10, but we'll call that minus g because I'm not plugging in numbers. I just want to get an equation. Uh, so Vy final then is going to be the negative of Vy initial. So here, Vy final is going to be minus V naught sine theta because it's going to pick up as much speed on its way back down as it lost on its way up. It's symmetric because it lands at the same height from which it is released. So we can rewrite this as minus V naught sine theta equals V naught sine theta minus gt. And then solve that for t, we get that t is equal to uh, um, minus two, uh, plus, actually minus 2, v naught sine theta divided by minus g. Or that's 2 v naught sine theta over g. So I'll take that expression for the time and plug it in there. So that gives me an expression then for my horizontal range is v naught times 2 v naught sine theta over g times uh, the cosine of theta, v naught cosine of theta. So there's the v naught, there's the cosine theta, here's the 2 v naught sine theta. So we can rewrite that then, a little more tidy, as 2 v naught squared sine theta cosine theta over g. And then we can make one final substitution using a trigonometric relationship, that being the sine of 2 theta is 2 times the sine of theta 
times the cosine of theta. Now the reason for doing this here is that we have an expression for the range that involves both the sine and the cosine of the same angle. So it'd be nice to make that a little more of a compact relationship uh, that uh, isn't quite so clunky. And uh, so we could rewrite this then, putting the two and the sine theta and the cosine theta in here, we get this as v naught squared times the sine of two theta over g. Right, so that gives us the horizontal range as a function of theta. Now, if we were to write a sine theta function and it looked like this, and this is two pi radians, this is pi radians, then a sine of two theta function is going to look just like this, except it's going to be more squeezed up. It's going to be squeezed up twice as much because by the time you get to theta here is pi, you, two times pi is two pi. Okay, so you've gone through a complete cycle in pi because it's the sign of two theta, and so two times pi is two pi. And so if we want to plot this up then, our horizontal range versus theta, it's going to look like this, two pi over two. Okay, and then the rest of this curve is going to go negative. But we really just need the part that goes to 90 degrees. Because if I'm firing off something, and the angle gets bigger and bigger, by the time it gets to 90 degrees, then I go over 90, then it starts going the other way. So that's in the negative direction. So that would be a negative horizontal range. That we could just redefine our direction as it's positive this way and just redraw this. So all we really need then is the part of this curve that goes from 0 to 90. So this is 90 degrees. I think you can see from symmetry that we should get the maximum horizontal range at 45 degrees. Okay, so that means that if the initial velocity is as um, is constant, and that doesn't depend on the angle. Now, that may not be true if you're throwing, say, a football or something. Uh, you might be able to throw the football better at some angles than others. But assuming that the initial velocity stays the same, independent of the, uh, how much angle the object is, is projected with, then the maximum value for the horizontal range would be here at v naught squared over g. That would be x max. And that would happen at this peak point. And so that would be, according to our graph at least, that would be 45 degrees. But let's verify mathematically that that in fact is the case. We can take the derivative, since this is x versus theta, remember, we can take dx d theta, and that'll give us the slope of this, and we'll set that equal to zero. Now it'll give us the condition for uh, x max in terms of theta. Okay, so x is v naught squared, so this is d by d theta of uh, v naught squared sine 2 theta over g, so that would be 0. Now, so this is v naught squared over g because that will never be 0 times uh, the derivative with respect to theta, the sine of 2 theta. Derivative of sine is cosine, so this would be 2 cosine 2 theta equals 0. So to make the cosine theta function equal to zero, you have to set two theta equal to 90, or theta is equal to 45 degrees. So this proves then that when the slope of the dx d theta curve is equal to zero, we're at a maximum, and that corresponds to a value of theta that happens, because two times 45 is 90, the cosine of 90 is zero. So therefore, 2 theta is 90, or theta is 45 degrees. So that 
if you were going to fire something and you want that object to land at the same height from which it was released, then you would want the angle to be 45 degrees. Okay, so this, then at a 45 degree angle, that would give you your maximum horizontal range. But notice also here that the way that this thing is set up, because of the symmetry of this, if we're here at 30 degrees, or we're here at 60, we should have the same horizontal range. If I've drawn this carefully, nicely. We should see there were equal distances on either side of 45, so we should have the same horizontal range. For at 10 degrees, and 80 degrees, we should have the same horizontal range. <laughs> okay, so what this tells us then is that complementary angles produce the same horizontal range. Look at a 30 degree angle. With a 30 degree angle, you've got a big Vx and a small Vy. Okay, but the, the Vy, uh, the size of Vy, affects the time of flight. And Vx affects the speed directly. Okay, so if we have a big Vx, then we're going to have a small Vy, right? And so that means we're going to have a small time. But if we had, say, a 60 degree angle here, then we'd have a small Vx and a big Vy. So we could uh, write this then as... Uh, for this one, at a 30 degree angle, we have a big Vx and a small time equals x. But here, at a 60 degree angle, we have a small Vx, so that means a small speed, but because we have a large Vy, it stays in the airway longer, so a big time of flight. And so those two just compensate for each other when the angles add to 90 degrees. And so the bigger Vy is, the more time it's going to spend in the air because time is equal to uh, Vy final minus Vy initial divided by G. And uh, this is going to be minus V naught sine theta minus V naught sine theta over G. Okay, and so with a, and then G is negative, so that would be negative, that'd be 2 V naught sine theta over G. Okay, so with a, um, if V naught sine theta is bigger, then that means that uh, the time is bigger. And so uh, the time of flight relates directly to the size of Vy initial and Vy final, which are both equal to each other. And so that gives us then the uh, expression for optimizing the horizontal range. Now, does this work at any, for any other case where we don't land at the same height from which it's released? No. We can look here at a simulation where we fire the object and here at 45 degrees it may have the maximum range back here to 
the height that it's released, but something that starts out with a bigger uh, Vx is going to be uh, able to traverse more distance uh, because of the extra time. And so the extra time, even though it's not quite as much time as if you fired it higher like this, that more than makes up for the For the, 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 the decrease in the time of flight is uh, more than made up for by the x component of the velocity. So if you have an angle that's less than 45, it'll go up farther if you want it to land below the height that it's released. But let's say that you're in a football game and uh, the down by six points and Super Bowl, and there's only three seconds left in the game, and you're on your uh, your own three yard line. <clears throat> you're backed up. <clears throat> what you're going to want to do is throw that ball as far as you can, and hope that your receiver is fast enough to get under it and catch it. And so uh, you'd want to throw it at a 45 degree angle. And, uh, so you could just imagine that uh, Tom Brady, say, doing and uh, hitting some really fast receiver, which they don't have right now, but let's assume they did. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> um, and you win the Super Bowl. Okay. Uh, or uh, another uh, example of this would be, say, if you're like on Mount Everest, there's a certain point where you put this ladder on the, uh, across this huge ice trench and then you walk across the ladder. Let's say that the guy in front of you walks across it and the ladder breaks and falls thousands of feet down. And so you don't want that to happen to you. So what do you do? Well, you turn around and you go home, right? <laughs> no, because you're already climbed Everest and you're coming back down. So you've got to do something. So you get a running start and then you jump at a 45 degree angle. And so that will optimize your horizontal range. Now, if you don't quite make it, have your ice axe ready to, uh, to smash it into the ice and uh, to catch you before you fall off the cliff. But that at least will give you the best opportunity of surviving if you can project yourself at a 45 degree angle. All right, now the next thing that I wanted to look at is the path that objects take in an xy curve in two-dimensional motion. So we can see this welder here with these little hot boxes flying off from the point where he's welding. So we can actually see the path or the trajectory of these different uh, particles that are experiencing two-dimensional motion. And we can see that that is in fact a parabola. Okay? And so what I want to show then is that this is parabolic motion in y versus x. So I'm going to derive this expression here for the y versus x uh, trajectory of uh, an object that uh, is moving under the influence of gravity. So here's our velocity, and we're, so we're going to want to try to plot this as y versus x. So the x component is going to be v naught cosine theta, the y component is going to be v naught sine theta. And so if we use the equation y equals v y uh, initial t minus one half g t squared for the y versus t plot, then for v y initial, we can plug in v 
v naught sine theta times t minus one half g t squared, and then we can get the time from uh, from our y equations of motion, and so if we use the uh, we use the Right, from the x equations of motion, we can say that x is equal to vx times t. Okay, so vx is v naught cosine theta times t. Or we can eliminate time in favor of x from the x equations of motion by just writing t is equal to x divided by v naught cosine theta. So I can take that value for the time plug it in here and there. And then, I've eliminated the time from this equation, and I've written y as a function of x. So that's what I'll do over on this side. So this gives us y is equal to v naught sine theta times t, which is x over v naught cosine theta, uh, minus one half g times t squared, and then that's going to be x over v naught cosine theta quantity squared. So then here, the v naughts will cancel in this first expression. That'll give me the tangent of theta times x minus 1 uh, over, or we could write this as g over 2 v naught squared cosine squared theta times x squared. Okay, so this is the equation of an inverted parabola that has a one intercept at the origin, because when y equals zero, x equals zero. So it's going to start like that. This will be y value. That'll be the x value. And uh, the fact that the higher degree of the polynomial, the, the second degree term, is negative tells us that it's an upside down parabola. Okay. And uh, so, uh, this equation can be useful to us if, for example, you wanted to know uh, what the initial velocity was to make a basket. So here's our plain basketball. And so this is going to be v naught. Okay, so that would go in here. Okay, but you know that when you release it, there's going to be a certain distance y a certain distance away from the basket, so that's x. And so you want it to have the right trajectory in order to be able to make the shot. And uh, so if you knew the y and the x value, and you knew they were firing this thing, say, at a 45-degree uh, angle in order to make it, uh, then you could solve that equation for v naught uh, to find the velocity that you would need to make the basket. Or, here's another example. If you are a stunt driver and you are taking your motorcycle over some burning coals, then you would want to know what the y and the x values were. Your theta value would be fixed from the value of the angle of inclination of the ram. And, uh, and you'd want to make it to the other side. So you do a calculation like this to uh, figure out how, what's the minimum speed that the motorcycle would have to go to make the jump.